With the surrender of Japan, the United States was left with a surplus of naval hardware, including German and Japanese vessels and several redundant aircraft carriers. But they found a use for them as targets. Operation Crossroads, conducted at Bikini Atoll, detonated two bombs. The first was airdropped and sank the Japanese cruiser Sakawa and four U.S. ships. The second underwater detonation sank the Japanese battleship Nagato and the U.S. battleship Arkansas and four more U.S. vessels, including the aircraft carrier Saratoga and two other major vessels. The next scene is a spectacular aerial view. The aircraft carrier Saratoga, grand old fighting lady, sank as a result of heavy underwater hull damage. Even these massive vessels were no match for atomic weapons. One such blast could disable an entire naval force. And a rethink of the structure of future navies was recommended. The United States set about building bigger and better carriers believing that air power was the key to future naval combat. At Brooklyn Navy Yard, the new Queen of the Fleet is commissioned with top brass from the Secretary of the Navy on down, present for the notable occasion. Captain Robert Stroh takes command of the 60,000-ton carrier USS Saratoga, the biggest and most powerful vessel afloat. Special attention was given crewman's comfort in her design, which also provided unmatched plane handling facilities, key to her striking power. The new Saratoga, sixth Navy vessel to bear the name, would dwarf her World War II namesake with its giant flight deck, five city blocks long, one block wide, and its complement of 100 jets and crew of 3,500. The greatest one-ship concentration of naval power ever built. Truly the new Queen of the Seas. There were also two new technologies developing that would dramatically influence ship design once again. They were nuclear reactors, small enough to fit on board a ship and provide an almost endless supply of energy for propulsion, and the guided missile that would be capable of replacing most naval armaments. A glimpse of the Navy of tomorrow, the USS Boston, America's first guided missile cruiser in action off Cuba. From below deck magazines, its potent Terrier missiles are automatically positioned on launching racks. Ship and missile were designed for each other in what engineers call an integrated weapon system, lethally efficient. This cruiser mounts no big guns. One of its missiles can sink any enemy ship or with an atom warhead, smash an enemy base. Guided missiles were the answer to several problems for the modern fleet, but also a curse. One small, well-aimed missile could, in theory, hit and sink a giant aircraft carrier with 100 aircraft aboard. The nuclear-powered carrier Enterprise has joined the 7th Fleet off the Vietnam coast to lend added punch to the coastal patrol. The Enterprise will be joined by the nuclear-powered guided missile frigate Bainbridge to become the first nuclear-powered ships in history to enter combat. The Enterprise will be stationed off Saigon to launch planes for airstrikes against the Viet Cong in South Vietnam. 